The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 19th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-664. We'd love to hear from you. But if you can't call in, you can always send me an email. You can send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject any please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers. Then, well, any and every ping, we all do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. A bit of a mixed bag out there. That mix coming from the S&P, which is down 11. The Russell's down 21. The Trannies are up 152. To the upside, it's the Dow, 32 points. The NASDAQ is up 6. And the semis are up 15. Gold's trading down about 17 bucks. Silver off about 19 cents. Slice recruit up 67 cents. Natural gas is off 23 pennies. And the 30-year Treasury trade down at 122.10. That's off 1 point and 8 ticks. Lead the charge. Dollar-wise, the upside, you got Netflix up 35 bucks. It's a 50. 15% move. Asimil Holdings up 6% or 25 bucks. Intuitive Surgical up about 13% or 25 bucks. Adobe's up 7. Lockheed Martin is up 9. To the downside, it is at Mercado Libre. What a cycle stock that is. It's off 30 bucks, down 3.5%. Generac Holdings off 32 bucks or 20%. Replogen Corp down 26 or 12%. M&T Bank is off 12%, 22 bucks. Thermo Fisher Scientific off 23 bucks, a little over 4%. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. So what do you want to do? Let's go start with the general markets. We'll start by doing this. See, I'm on this black background screen. Let's just pull this over here. So the issues right now are the short-term time frame, ES, which has a bearish crossover. So on here up the upper left-hand side, you'll see there are 63 instruments trading above the top of the 30-minute profile. These are stocks with inside the S&P 500, 207 below the bottom. So uh, here's where the pressure is at. Uh, for the NDX 100, the numbers read like this. Uh, above the top of the profile, we have a total of, let's do any calculations, all 100 stocks, 14. And below the bottom, for 30-minute basis, 43. So it's a short-term issue. When I say short-term, I'm referring to 30-minute time frame charts. So we'll keep a focus on that as we move over to those equity future charts out here. But as we take a look at the other four time frames, really the, the first three, the 60, 240, and daily for the S&P 500 are all in bullish crossover mode, not the weekly. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, same situation. No, not the same situation. So we take a look at the NQ. We want to take a look at the 60-minute time frame as well. 24 instruments trading above the top, 43 instruments trading below the bottom. So that, so we at least understand where we're at with regard to market breadth for the NDX, NDX 100 and the S&P 500. So let's stay with the S&P 500 for the moment. The 30-minute chart, the 60-minute chart. So the 30-minute chart for the ES Mini showed that we were um, – uh, had a bearish crossover, but you also have a bullish structured profile. So our price should find support. The buyers are lined up on a 30-minute basis between 3705 and 3713. 
If you look at that 60 minute time frame, the 60 minute time frame identified also, uh, well, on ES Mini, it had a bullish crossover. Now, that makes a lot of sense. You also had a TD nine count bottom that formed at nine o'clock this morning. Price did do what it was supposed to do, which was run up to that oscillator and change line. It did that as we were coming uh, during that 11 o'clock hour. This is a hourly chart that we're looking at, but price did find resistance. Consolidating with inside its daily profile, the next battleground to the upside is at the 3739 to 3743 level above 3743. It would be 3765. That's a TD nine count breakdown area. Now let's switch over and take a look at the NQ charts out here. Now, price should move higher, but there are, by the way, so there's a TD9 count top on the 240, TD9 count top on the 120-minute time frame chart. We had a erodes momentum indicator top on the 60s. So there's all kinds of tops out here, but no key levels of support have been broken. And remember, market breadth is, for the S&P 500, is positive for three time frames, 60, 240, and daily, 60-minute, 240-minute, and daily. And just an issue with regard to its 30-minute time frame. But we can see our bullish structured profile for it. So um, the push lower should be able to be handled by the buyers that are out there. Now let's switch over and take a look at the NQ charts out here. So we'll get a feel for what those are communicating to us. Um, yeah, Netflix uh, trading higher, but uh, that's just one instrument and not a heavily weighted instrument, I don't think. As well, it might be in the top 15. Uh, of the uh, NASDAQ 100 stocks. So here we take a look at the NQ, and it's trying, it's struggling, it's dealing with the resistance level of the top of that daily profile. Top of that profile, again, if you didn't write that down in your pad of paper, is uh, 11 What is it? I can't see it myself. Sorry. Uh, 11 They're trading at 11 uh, so let's go to the 30-minute chart. 30-minute chart had the uh, – so for the NQ, 30-minute chart had a bearish crossover. It, too, has a bullish structured profile. It's already been tested. Uh, it was tested during the uh, 1030 time frame. So another strong support between 11.123 and 11.142. The hourly time frame – showed that it also had a bearish crossover. Price pulled back and tested and held this very key level of support, this little TD9 count breakout area. Now, nobody, and I mean nobody, myself, anybody with inside TFNN, would have chosen 11.10350 as the breakout level. That's the beauty of the TD9 count pattern. Why? Because it takes gets rid of all the subjectivity. It becomes a very objective element, and it's always amazing. It doesn't... I still find it amazing when price pulls back, finds support there, or moves higher and finds resistance at the uh, TD9 count breakdown areas out here. But price right now on the NQ for 60 minute time frame, just consolidating with inside its daily profile, would have presume a close above 11, 273.50 would cure the negative market breath for the instruments with inside the NQ out there. Is there anything else for us to look at inside the NQ right now? Again, long term, uh, not long term. On its 240 and it's a two-hour time frame charts, they have TD9 count tops, Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the uh, two-hour chart. We've got the same kind of setup on the 60 minutes. So we got those tops, but price again is pulled back, tested key levels of support, which has held. That suggests to us that we should see a continued move higher. Doesn't necessarily have to be today, um, and the reason is because we just had a two-day rally, and as you know. Counter trend moves, which is what we're in right now. That's not to say that we can't have more of a counter trend move, but they typically um, peter out after about two trading sessions. And then we get a pullback, and then maybe we get that resumption higher. And that's especially true if we don't take out any key levels of support. Dow's up 65, SP back 7, NASDAQ 100 up 15. Two questions in the den so far. No, two questions uh, outside of the den so far SWKS and SKLZ. And inside the den, well, I'll figure what was requested in a moment. We'll be right back. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. 
Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. My apology there. I forgot to switch over to the uh, white background charts, which is what I was taking a look at. I've got those up on our screen right now here for the NQ. So you can see 60-minute time frame chart, price pulling back to that 11.10350 area, that TD9 count breakout. You can see the new profile that is out here again, 11.27350 up at the top. So you'll want to watch uh, that out there. But we've got a number of questions that have come in. Specifically, we've got, it looks like, five here. So let's get to uh, those right now. Again, we'll change. Well, we'll stay on the screen here, which is going to change panel, so to speak. So the first question came in from Nicholas. And Nicholas wants to take a look at uh, Skywork Solution. SWKS is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Uh, Nicholas is looking for an entry point. So the very first thing, Nicholas, on a longer term standpoint, and by longer term, I'm referring to a monthly, uh, price negated last month, the month of September, price negated a TD9 count bottom. This is suggesting that over time, Skywork Solution wants to continue to move lower. Now, as far as move lower, I'd be targeting the area of the uh, January 2019 range. That's between uh, 6012 and 7408 out there. So that's uh, where things look to be headed to. Now, on a weekly time frame, you have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. That's those black diagonal lines. Tells us about a market that stretched but hasn't been confirming that stretch out there. And then that needs a bullish reversal candle and a close above that oscillator and change line that's currently printed to 85.17. Short of that, price may head lower. Now, today's going to become bar number eight. I apologize. Today will become bar number nine. Yeah, I think it'll be uh, no problem becoming bar number nine. So that will give us effectively a TD9 count bottom here, Nicholas, uh, tomorrow. Remember that TD9 count uh, can uh, generate a bottom on the bar following bar number nine. Uh, because the roads meant them signal, trigger that's out there, signal, uh, I would wait for a bullish reversal candle uh, before I would step into this. So there's a possibility based upon the weekly charts, that's a weekly chart we were looking at, that you could see a bottom between this week and uh, next week. 
really would be between last week and next week because uh, last week was the low so far of the pattern. On the daily time frame, you've got a nice road momentum indicator bottom. Now, here you can see you got that nice big bullish engulfing candle. That was the confirmation. So you get these black diagonal lines that draw uh, or that are drawn on my chart out here. That just signals that we've got a market that is stretched and it hasn't been confirmed out there because it has less relative weakness to the downside. Now, that can be repaired by having more relative weakness to the downside. Um, but on the daily time frame chart out here, that's not what took place. What took place was a road momentum indicator signal that was then confirmed with a bullish engulfing candle. But that red, the oscillator change on very key level out there, folks. It is not a moving average, okay? So you want to take a look at this. You want to learn this pattern. I teach you that pattern out there so it becomes easy for you to track or calculate it yourself. When you're below a red oscillator and change line, it's kind of a bearish signal directionally speaking out here now in the case of uh, skyworks it's consolidating with inside its daily profile but because it's below that red oscillator and change line nicholas price may be targeting profile support and that's at 7807 so 7807 is a potential area for you to consider out there if you can consider that you'd like to see some kind of bottoming signal on the intraday charts out there so i think right now you want to be patient but the concern is that monthly time frame chart so let the weekly at least get a confirmation, a nice confirmation, a road momentum indicator signal, a close above its oscillator and change line, and then maybe what you've got out there is simply just a trade. So, Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for the request. The next request coming in is from Richard D., Rich D., and he wants to take a look at tickers. <coughs> Excuse me, SKLZ, skills out here. So let's go switch over to that. I think I've got that already set up. Uh, boom, there we do. And in essence, what uh, Rich was looking for, his question is, where can it be bought? So if you look at this weekly chart, I mean, this is real. This is this is uh, this back in February of 2021. There were this volume of 128 million shares. So <clears throat> I know this was no reverse merge or anything along those lines. <clears throat> this traded up to 46 I have forty six dollars and thirty cents. You're at ninety cents right now. <clears throat> Rich D, why? Why are you searching here? Why are you searching here? There's nobody at this party having much fun out here. Now look on a monthly time frame, this month, the month of October, uh, will complete a TD nine count bottom pattern. But if price starts closing below the low of the month, whatever that is, right now the low of the month is um it's 83 cents. So if it starts trading below that or close below, it tells you we're headed lower. It's at 83 cents. How much lower can it go? If you know what I mean. Um, I I don't, uh, I, you know, I, look, here's here's what I can share with you. You do have on a daily time frame, you have a road momentum indicator signal. That was confirmed when most of the market confirmed it on Monday, October the 13th. But all that's done is led to a consolidation with inside its daily profile. I suppose if price closed above the top of its daily profile, that would be at a buck. What that would then be signaling to you is that price might run up to a buck 27 out there. If price gets back to 86 cents, the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile, that could be an entry area. Of course, what you'd want to do is make sure that volume was really light on that pullback, and you would compare it against that October 13th candle session. Now, on October 13th, it did 8.1 million shares. So far today, you're already at 4 million shares in two hours. So it's pushing into a swing point with volume. Richard, that suggests at least getting down to the 86 cents out here, but I would be looking elsewhere. But, uh, uh, you know, to, eat, to each your own. Thanks for the request out there. Happy to look at this. Happy to look at this anytime uh, for you. It's just... Um, this doesn't look that uh, great out there. But best of luck, and I hope to hear from you again soon. That was Rich. Uh, Netflix, uh, Dennis inside the Tigers Den wants to take a look at Netflix, NFLX, having a heck of a nice day out here. And uh, Dennis's question was, can you take a look at long-term Netflix? Thanks, uh, Dennis G. So long-term, <clears throat> first, when I take a look at Netflix, I had a consolidation pattern that had been drawn in there. And we can see that price broke through that consolidation. So now, uh, typically when you break through consolidation, you will see this do a move equal to or greater than the consolidation. There is nothing inside of the chart here, the daily chart for Netflix, to suggest that it won't do that. Do that means gets up towards the 286 level. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, Price is above the top of its weekly profile. It's above a prior swing point. You've got a A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, we'll probably want to draw this on my other charts out there, but here's the A to B point. Uh, it's actually, <laughs> it, to by letter C, part of the chat. I'll just move this over 
to the uh, D point level out here. And so, whoops, one to one is going to give us a price projection level on Netflix. Come on, what the heck is going on here? There we go. Uh, in about the 300-ish area out there, 299.56 or so. And on a monthly time frame chart, even though I don't have a bottom pattern, price is above the top of its profile. And as long as it remains above 261.07, price should move to 331.44. So longer term, which is what you were asking for, Netflix has got a daily consolidation breakout, plus it negated its TD9 count top. It did that today. You've got a consolidation measured move. That suggests getting up to the 287 level. You have an A to B equals CD on a weekly basis of the upside. It can do more than a one-to-one, -one, but the one-to-one -one gets you up to about 300 as well. And you're at 331.43 when it comes to the monthly time frame. On a short-term basis, uh, if we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we do not have any kind of a topping signal. I take that back with the exception of letter G. So that is wave number seven. That appears that that will go ahead and uh, form here as we come into the 1130 hours. So that could be suggesting a pullback into that oscillator and change line on a 30 minute basis. So you could see a short term pullback to about 261. But otherwise, those longer term objectives are what the charts for Netflix are communicating to you and I. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, up, folks. So we've got another uh, five questions uh, at least. Oh, no, we got six. Uh, so we're going to seven. Oh, this is perfect. And thank I want to thank each of you. You send these questions in. Just makes it so much easier for me. 
Um, I just got to kind of take, take an inventory here inside the Tigers and make sure I catch everything. So I believe the next one up is from Joey D. Wants to take a look at Wheaton Precious Metals. Ticker symbol there is WPM. Trading out right now at uh, 3108. I don't recall the question here, Joey. I think it was just to take a look at the chart. So what do we know at this stage? What we do know is that um, this formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern out here. But the swing point from September 26 is what was recently tested. So volume-wise, September 26 did 3.8 million shares it was tested on the trading day of october 13th with three million shares a little over three million so three million going against 3.8 million so it does have a test and rejection of that uh, swing point other than that i don't have any kind of a bottoming signal in fact if anything it says that that swing point should get tested again that's because prices below red oscillator and change line without any kind of a bottoming pattern out here and prices below the bottom of its profiles daily profile and its red oscillator and change line on a weekly basis, you have a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. That formed back on September 30th. But price right now is testing its oscillator and change line and is trading just below the bottom of its weekly profile. And on a monthly time frame, no bottom signal here whatsoever. So it's the daily chart right now that's controlling things. It suggests that price will pull back even further. Watch for another test of that swing point. Perhaps it's a September 26 swing point high at $30.25. If you get another test and rejection, you at least know that there aren't a lot of sellers left inside of wheat and precious metals. But if volume picks up, well, then that would be a different story. So thanks so much for the request, Joey D. I do hope that helps you out. And have a, a wonderful Wednesday. Coda inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol PXD. So for PXD, I've got those charts here already fired up. On a monthly basis, PXD is neutral. Neutral because it has a TD9 count top, but price is above its green oscillator and change line. Just consolidating with inside that profile. On a weekly time frame, I just have a consolidation with inside its weekly profile. We know that 259.78, the top of that profile, has been resistance. So that's what you'd keep an eye on to the upside. On a daily time frame out here, what do we have? Not much. Let's just simply expand out the screen. What do we see out here? What do we see? <clears throat> well, what I see is prices above its oscillator and change line. Uh, that has been tested several times over the last couple of weeks out here, as long as it remains above that, which is currently 244.47. You should see it move to 251, maybe even that 261.88 area. That's from the daily time frame. Nothing else really sticks out to me, Coda, when I take a look at these intraday charts out there. So I hope that provides you with the information that you're looking for. Again, you're kind of neutral on the monthly with a consolidation with inside profiles. 259.78 is key resistance. That's from the weekly chart. And on the daily time frame, as long as price remains above the uh, 244.44 level, you should see a move to 251 and perhaps 261 out there. So, yeah, it is definitely trading range bound. The next question coming in from Inno Visual inside the Tiger's Den. Inno wants to take a look at the SMHs out here. So let's get those up. We'll do it on this uh, three panel here. They just simply are going to populate a little bit uh, quicker for me. His other question is, why is the Russell 2000 uh, so weak today compared to the other indices out there? So it's trading lower most certainly. It's off 22 points right now, or one and a quarter percent. But we'll have to go back and really take a look at the charts to make a determination whether it's really weak or not out there. But why is it trading lower? More so, you know, because of the constituents inside there. Um, you know, and I don't know. Tom has a way through his system to tell us the weightings within inside, the sector weightings within inside the Russell 2000, which at one point in time, maybe they still are, were really heavily weighted on the oil side the oil and the metal side is my recollection but i don't know where we're at in 2022 in october i, I wish i did have that information i passed on to you if i did maybe during tom show you can write into him and he'll be able to share that information with you but with regard to the smh's on a daily time frame what you can see out there is a real nice roads momentum indicator bottom and price is trying to right now get above its oscillator and change line. That's a real key level. You can see price has not closed above it even since that Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Today could be the day. In order to do that, price would need to close above 176.62. Now look, folks, if, if price moves down, that number is going to move down just slightly out there. Um, but 176.62, 63 is the number we're looking at as we speak right now. On a weekly basis, you're likely going to get a TD9 count confirmation this week. But remember, the low can still take place on the bar following bar number nine. Bar number nine is what's going to complete this week. 
So you may not have that information until next week. On a monthly basis, a TD9 count bottom will form. But again, it could be the month of November that generates that bottom signal because it can be the bar following bar number nine. In that case, in the SMHs, it could be targeting this next breakout level at 126.11 out there. So what's the uh, call here in the SMHs? The SMHs, well, let me look at a 30-minute time frame chart, see if that's going to influence any of our uh, thought processes out here. As we take a look at it, this just shows basically a consolidation. Well, it shows you re your resistance level. So this will be helpful to you, um, you know, and that is uh, 183.03. You can expect that to be resistance, and if price can close above that, then the move should take you to 191.34. From a support standpoint, it's the breakout area at the 174.70 level that I would be watching to the downside. So this is suggesting to you and I that the SMH, as long as they close above that red oscillator and change line, one, they should make it their way back to 182.07. But more likely, the 189.61 area would be where they would be targeting. So, you know, I hope that helps you out. Uh, let's try to answer that question, though, for you with regard to the Russell 2000, at least the best that Stevie can do. So let's go take a look at the Russell. Let's go switch over to a different set of screens out here. And to do that, we'll go look at the black background screens. And this is the daily time frame. So, you know, you're, you are right here. It is weak. From the standpoint that it's now getting back inside its daily profile, 1757. We saw a close above it yesterday. Uh, what price did do is it ran right into that descending trend line. Um, in fact, you've got the Dow, the one on the left-hand side, running into a descending trend line. You've got the NQ running into a descending trend line and the top of its profile out here. So the only one of the four that are in really breakout mode is the S&P 500, the ES Mini. Price is above the top of that profile, which, again, is that 30... Seven no thirty six ninety, top of the profile thirty six ninety two out there thirty six ninety three, so um, why is it weaker? You know I, I don't know that it's really that much weaker, if you will, than the uh, NQ and the Dow, uh, especially when we take a look at trend lines and uh, profile information out there. So don't know if that helped you out, but it is at least a little color that I can add to uh, your question out there. Next question coming in from Dan the Man Levitan, and Dan wants to take a look at Light Sweet Crude. So let's go switch over, we'll switch panels here, we'll get to the white background charts, change my window, I don't wanna do a whole analysis and then uh, get somebody in my ear saying, hey Stevie, you're not even looking at those charts on the screen. You're talking one thing and people are seeing the other. So now we got Light Sweet Crew. We've got the December contract that we're trading right now. This will take a few moments here to populate. Dan specifically was looking for the 30 and the 60 minute uh, time frame analysis out there. So that's what we'll do here uh, in a moment. But but first on a daily basis, because it's got to be an influencing factor. You've got a nice TD9 count top. Price is below uh, its bottom of its daily profile. It's below its red oscillator and change line. Dan the man, Levitan, if I asked you, where do you think the lights we crude, the daily chart that Stevie has posted, says price is headed to? And Dan would say 7836, Stevie. That is its TD9 count breakout level. So we want to have that as color inside the charts as we look at them. The five-hour chart, what do we know here? Light Sweet Crude hates that red oscillator and change line. It hasn't been able to close above it other than one bar uh, for quite some time. We go back to the uh, early October time frame out there. So right now, 83.49 is going to be a real key level of resistance. That's the current print on a five-hour chart for Light Sweet Crude. But we haven't gotten to the 30 and 60-minute chart. I know. We'll do that when we come back from this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors.
The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so we're taking a look at light sweet crude. And uh, right now I went to the uh, daily time frame chart, the black background screen. So uh, Dan provided me with a little bit more information here. He, he feels like he may have missed his entry point at the 0.6 weight retracement. He's looking at the daily time frame. He's looking at the low that formed on September 26 out here. Uh, and the high that formed on October the uh, 10th. And you can see the 0.6 rate retracement level there. That's what he's taking a look at. Um, so let's go try to answer that question. Did Dan miss an entry point there? And I believe it's that five-hour time frame chart that says, Dan, likely you have not. So it's a good to take a look. We're going to go to the 60 and the 30 minute chart here momentarily. But if you look at this five hour time frame chart, I'm simply going to expand this out so that you take a look at it. Now it does have a wave seven bottom. Okay, letter G. And what that did was that turned into a uh, move up to its oscillator and change line, which it rejected yesterday. It rejected most certainly today and is likely headed back to 81.79. That's the five hour time frame chart. That's its level of support. So I don't think you missed it. I think you're going to see price get back to that 81.79. At least that's the message coming from the five hour time frame chart. Now let's go see if those short term time frame charts, such as the 30, are confirming that as well. Well, turns out on a 30 minute basis, as price was hitting the point six rate retracement on the daily time frame, Dan got what he liked out here, which was an A to B equal C D to the downside. That completed. We took a look at that yesterday, and that was this hammer candle. This was at uh, 1030 or 11, 11 o'clock in the morning. And we said if price closed below 81.33, the low of that hammer candle, if you were long, you were wrong. Well, that net price never did close below that area out there. But what we really just have is a sideways consolidation. Price run into resistance at 83.34 area, TD9 count breakdown area, and 82.23, the TD9 count breakout level out there. If we look at a 60-minute time frame chart, let's go see what message it has. And really, the message of the 30 was what? Just a sideways consolidation. The message of the 60 is what? Just a sideways consolidation, Dan. 83.48, you know, is a key area of resistance, the top of that 60-minute profile. If price is able to get below that red oscillator and change line, it's not below it right now. It's just hanging right at it. Then obviously, not obviously, then price would likely head back to the bottom of that profile. That would be 81.66. So, no, I don't think you have... 
missed it just yet, maybe to the tick if you were trying to buy it right at the uh, level of maybe 81.93, but what? We're at 82.60 right now. So I don't think that you missed it. I'd really watch that five hour time frame chart. I do know that you follow the oscillator and change, and I believe that you do out there. So that is a real key level of resistance that no matter when you take the trade, if it's to the upside, you got to see price close above that, certainly for two consecutive sessions out there. So thanks so much for writing in. Our uh, One of our dinners, uh, SNP, wants to take a look at ticker symbol ON. So let's go fire that up out here, ON. As soon as this populates, we'll review those charts. ON is uh, what? I know it is the uh, spelling for the word ON. So, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's not like I'm the sharpest tool in the shed. That's an understatement. But ON is actually ON Semiconductor. And on semiconductors, trading out at 61.12 right now. It's with inside its daily profile, uh, so it's consolidation, but it's below its red oscillator and change lot. If it remains below 61.54, we may see a move back to the 56.60 level. As we open up this daily time frame chart, we can see this had a nice wave number seven top, Rhodes momentum indicator top out there. And um, so what do we have? We've got a nice A to B equals CD to the downside. That completed with this bullish engulfing candle on October the uh, 13th out there. But it's real key level of resistance out here. S&P is at red oscillator and chain line. If you're looking to buy this, then I'd wait to see if you get this down at the bottom of that profile at 56.60. The only reason why that might happen is because price is below that red oscillator and change line on a weekly time frame you've got an a to b equal cd but no bullish reversal candle to confirm that bottom if price is able to regain this week the bottom of its daily or the bottom of its weekly profile that would, be, would require a close above 6120 well that would be a positive on a monthly time frame You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That was confirmed in the month of September when it generated a bear sash candle. Price remains below its oscillator and change line. That suggests you could see lower price. That lower price could get down to 48.91. I'm not thinking about 48.91, not just yet, not knowing that you've got 56. 60 as a key area of support. That's the bottom of the daily profile. Nothing on an intraday chart that I have out here that's worth showing you, SNP. So uh, I don't recall what you were looking for here specifically, but if you're looking for an entry point, I'd be patient. It'd either be the 56.60, 59.93 level. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the uh, request out there. Happy to do that. And we got Peter inside the Tiger's Den. And Peter wants to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator line. So let's go do that for him. In order to do that, we've got to shift the screens out here. We'll get that black background screen, the e-signal screens up here. And then we'll go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, which is panel number two. You'll see right now it's printed out at about 34. One. That means it's above its zero. Whoops. Change screens. Uh, go. We'll go live. There we go. Now we've got it. Okay. So now when we take a look at this, again, that uh, second panel is what we're looking at, the advanced client oscillator. What is an advanced client oscillator, Stevie? Well, that's the, uh, you take the advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange, and you look at the difference between its 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. And that's, in essence, what it is. Now, when it's above the uh, zero threshold level, which it has been for like three or four days now, it tells us that buyers are in control. However, if you look at that very bottom panel of screen, that's the spot volatility index. It is above its 50-day expense moving average. That tells us sellers are in control. So one message, buyers are in control. Another message, sellers are in control. Is there any wonder that we're in a choppy market out here? No wonder whatsoever. That's really what the signals are communicating to you and I. So, Peter, that's what the advanced client oscillator is doing as we speak right now. I hope that that helps you out. If there's more information that you need, please write back to me, and I'll be happy to try to get that for you. Hector and the fuel injector, that would be Patty, she wants to take a look at, and he wants to take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. Happy, wonderful Wednesday is how the uh, message uh, begins. And back at you, sipping my cowboy coffee this morning. Now, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, pouring over the uh, Daily Stevo newsletter. Got to love that. The hair on your neck stood on edge as you read XLE close above 83.54. Well, we're above 83.54. That was the top of that profile. And if we do close above that, that suggests that we get back to those highs. Those highs that I'm referring to are the highs from back in June of 2022. And those highs being about the 93.31, maybe at the low 87.68. Now, we have on the daily, weekly time frame is the top of its profile is 83.53. So we got an 83.53 and an 83.54. Hector and Patty, it leaves us with one more profile resistance level, at least as of 11.49 in the morning, and that's 84.98. 
And that's the top of the monthly profile. So I would say if we see a close of 84.98, odds favor, we get back to those highs from uh, June out there. Maybe it takes those out, and we continue to head higher out there. Uh, you go on to say uh, equals breakout plus more. Yep, yep. Please confirm this exciting news. Yeah, you, so we just went through that. Your letter in archives, the gift that keeps on giving. Well, I love that. Thanks so much for that. Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate that last message there, too, Hector and Patty. So, yeah, you got a nice uh, breakout going on inside of the energy sector. The next message coming in from uh, Tim. Tim writes in and says, I've got a long position in double verify, DV is the uh, ticker symbol out there. I don't think I have looked at this chart, so let's look at this with Tim. He says it bounced off of that oscillator and change line this morning. you got to love that. Uh, let's get this chart here pop it. It most certainly did. So he's following one of our tools. What it also did here, Tim, is it still is above the top of that daily profile. So that's two bullish signals coming from the daily time frame for ticker symbol DV. Can you please take a look at support levels on the daily and the weekly time frame? Where should I hang up? And where should I hang in and where should I dump it? Steve Rhodes with TF and I will try to answer that question so we get back to this one. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Double verify holdings, that ticker symbol, folks, DV. That's what we got on our screens out here. This is for Tim M. Uh, he's in it. Uh, the oscillator and change line, uh, you're looking for support levels and on uh, the daily and weekly. So your support is really between 26.45 and 26.99. 
That's the bullish structured area of its daily profile. Again, price is above the top of that daily profile. So that then says right now, 2808 is a level of support. So you got three levels of support on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, it's the top of its profile. And that's at the 2797 level. And below that, it's at 2606. That's the uh, bearish structured uh, daily, uh, weekly profile. And again, two consecutive closes above that would be nice. Now you're moving into a swing point. That's a swing point from September 9th out there. That had 7 million shares. We're two and a half, we're basically halfway through the trading week out there and you're only about 2.6. So you're moving into a swing point with light volume. So it's not exactly telling us it's going to bust this thing out to the upside out here. And even on a daily basis, yesterday, the volume out there was a total of 1.5 million shares going into a swing point that had 2.1 million shares. I'd still stick with this thing. I'd watch those support areas out there. I don't see reason to sell. You are moving higher with lighter volume, but that's not necessarily reason to sell out there. So I hope, Tim, that that provides you with the information that you were looking for. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Now, I did mention to you, let's go take a look at this set of charts out here. I did mention to you that it would not be unusual, or I think I mentioned it to you, that it would not be unusual for price to pull back today at the end of the day. Why is that? Now, maybe that's not going to happen because we're still above yesterday's close. I'm taking a look at the NQ out here. But what you'll see, this chart here identifies consecutive closes, lower closes, those would be in red, and consecutive higher closes, those would be in uh, black out there. And you'll see that most most uh, for the most part these counter trend moves out here have lasted two bars you'll see a lot of twos you'll see a couple one four you'll see a couple of threes out here you'll see one five but for the most part that moves in a uh, two-step the texas two-step or otherwise the delray two-step but sometimes that step turns into a third step out there so it would not be unusual if we do get a higher high today that's what could be day number three that we should see retracement here relatively soon Folks, stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up with you. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Again, thanks so much for joining us. Take care.